In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, choir. Thank you so much. Praise God. Hallelujah. Greetings to the church of God, the bride of Jesus, the body of Christ. We are here to seek the only person we serve, the only person we look up to. This is the day the Lord has made, and he has special things for us today. He does. He does. So, you know, I do not, con I do not consider myself a pastor <laughs> because <laughs> pastor takes a lot extra patience. But truly, um, my own gift leans more towards the prophetic. So, I believe what we are sharing today, open up your spirit and, um, you know, claim which one is yours. Amen? Amen? Amen. Key into it. There might be some things you may not comprehend, but let your spirit, let the Holy Spirit minister to your heart. Okay? So that's how we're going to do it today. Praise God. So the topic, like Pastor said, is the birth of a new identity. The birth of a new identity. And I'll first read from Isaiah 43. 16 to 19. Isaiah 43, 16 to 19. This is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and reinforcement together, and they lay there never to rise again extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. You see, this scripture is, marks a turning point. Because not only was he just talking about what just happened, but if you read the last two, it was also talking about what was to come. Because coming out of the Red Sea, God was then going to take them into the wilderness. And one of the things that happens in the wilderness is there's no water. So not only was God saying, I just did something powerful for you, okay? So you acknowledge everything, the grace that brought us here, the grace that brought you here, the grace that brought you here is also going to take you to the next dimension. So he said he will make a way. So he's talked about what just happened. And then what lied ahead of them? He said, don't worry, I will make a way for you. And he said, even in wastelands, streams of water, which were most of the miracles Moses had to, everything had to do with water, source. Even God, David, Moses got into trouble because of water. Right? So God knew what they needed. He knew that as they were going forward, they would be searching for a way. Because there's that. There is no road. There's no third road. No visible direction. No clear direction. Where do I turn? Left, right, left, right. You don't know. But God said he was going to plow a way where there's no way. He also said in wastelands where typically there is dryness, it will be your source. Streams, 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 source. It will be your source. Amen? Amen. Let's also read Isaiah 66, verse 9. Isaiah 66, verse 9. Shall I bring to the time of birth and not cause 
delivery, says the Lord. Shall I who cause delivery shut, it up, shut up the womb? It's like God saying, would I make a promise for you and not fulfill it? Why would I promise you abundant harvest and you don't see it? Why would I promise you a new birth, a new identity, upliftment, and I will not bring it to pass? Why? And God saying, no. He's the one that says things before they even happen. So what he has prophesied, when God sends a word, great are the company of those who publish it. And his word will not return to him void. So I want to declare every promise that God has spoken concerning this church, you, your family, they begin to manifest in Jesus' name. Every word of God that has been spoken, that aligns to the will of our Father, let them gain momentum into manifestation in Jesus' name. You know, but where God is taking you and I, you're going to need more power, more grace, more favor, more anointing, more abilities, more influence, more capacity, more wisdom, more authority, more wealth, more health, access. Okay? Where God is taking you and I, more. Say more. more. More of God, not less. More. More wisdom. More knowledge. More. More. More of you. More grace. You know, when you think about metamorphosis, the caterpillar also knows it can fly. The caterpillar knows it can fly, but it has to go through a process. Right? And so, who tells the caterpillar it is time to get into a cocoon and start that process? How does it know that, you know, this era of crawling is over? This era of begging, I'm done. What, what, what initiates it? I think it has to do with internal frustration. When you are done, okay? When you are done, <laughs> you must cry for new beginning. When you look around you and it doesn't look like God's promise for you, you must say, this is, it does, you, you, you have to say, you know, something has to change. So who triggers it? You. You know why? Because who you are going to be has been for is predestined. Wherever God wants to take us, he didn't start it. He knows it, but you don't know it. Right? Before you were born, I ordained you. Right? God has everything mapped out. It is us crawling, trying to find the way on the ground. But God says, my child. That's why when he whispers within you, he will tell you this is not the place. Like the prodigal son. He will tell you, wake up. Get it right. Get your mind right. This is not what... It doesn't look like, as long as it doesn't look like your promised land, don't settle there. Wherever you are right now, if it doesn't look like the promise that made you, you know, start a journey, don't settle there. You know, the scripture says many are called, but few are chosen. And when you look at it, is that God has called. He will whisper, come, come Aya, come. I have something new for you, come, right? But there's a process. 
And those who are chosen are the ones who finish the process. Because the military can call you, but when, after they test you, <laughs> after they train you, if you don't pass, <laughs> right? So there's a process. Say there's a process. There's a process to the higher call. Matthew 22, 11 to 14. Matthew 22, 11 to 14. And when the king came, came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he said unto him, friend. Notice he called him friend. So this is not a stranger. Friend, how comest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot, and take him away and cast him in outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. This is kind of like just a little bit of caution because many times we feel just because we are called, we don't have to be processed and we can show up anyhow. And we can do anything. And we can say anything and look anyhow and that there are no consequences for not preparing for God's calling. You know, God can call you to himself but he has criteria, he has standards. The higher you actually go and get towards power and elevation, the more careful you have to be. Praise God. So God's call is not to be abused. God's call is not to be taken for granted. God's call is not to be mismanaged. Romans 8.30. Romans 8.30. And he said, those, who, those he predestined, he also called. So those who, before he sent you here, you're destined for greatness. But when we come into this world, we start from baby, right? And we start crawling, right? A, B, C, D, right? One, two, three, we are learning. We are learning, right? Go to school, you go to school. Calculus, eh? Subtraction, addition, exponential this, exponential that. X plus Y equal to, you are learning, right? Can you see that? This is somebody destined for greatness, but he's crawling, then walking, then standing. But then the system of the world puts you through a system. And then there's an awakening to your call. That's not your call. Until you know your call, you are in a program. You are programmed externally. The systems of the world, your culture, your nature, your nurturing, programs you until <laughs> you upgrade to God's program. So we take on an identity that may not be God's original identity. Where does that identity? So identity could come from nature, nurture, the people who raised you. This is how life is. This is it. They are teaching you their best. In fact, they are imposing their own identity on you. Turn right, turn left. Ah, don't talk like that. Talk like this. Talk, right? They are training you. But realize, God also wants to give you a different training. But most people, they don't hear it. So we find most people in the world, it's like an assembly line. We are all marching forward, programmed by the world system. Everything they teach you in school, you know there's a policy behind it. It's, it's regulated. Somebody determines what you would know. Somebody wrote the book and decided, decided, the day you say you want to be an engineer, oh yeah, go and read this. The day you say you want to be a doctor, read that. You want to be an accountant, read this. 
So you are programmed to function in that line and capacity. And that capacity that they are giving you is so that you can survive. You can get a livelihood. And it is organized by the government. Of every Western civilization, they don't want you depending on them because if you cannot trade your skill, if you don't have any skill, and you cannot trade it, welfare. So the way the system is, every person will go through that organized system. When you are three, be here. Five, be here. 10, be here. 20, be here. First 20 years of everybody that has a degree, you are programmed to be an employee. Wealth creation knowledge is not in that programming. And those he predestined, but say, I've been predestined for greatness. So he calls you into greatness. And those he called, he also justified. Justified is being found worthy. For good reason for that promotion. And those he justified, he glorified. Once you have gone through the process God asked for you, for your ascension, he will dress you up. So there is a process between your calling and your glorification. And one thing I just want to say, that calling, that God's calling may disrupt everything that has been programmed in us. That calling <laughs> may tell you, I know, you're an accountant. I know, I know, I know, I know. But that programming was to sustain you. But I have more than sustenance. I'm talking about abundance. Sustenance is not abundance. Crawling is not flying. Surviving is not thriving. But the process of transformation is unique to everybody. So the caterpillar that believes it can fly, what does it have to do? <laughs> what does it have to do? It has to look and say, see, ground, I'll see you later. He finds a spot and starts weaving, right? He's going to go through an incubation. Then he ropes himself and then stays, waits. And then life force, a new life force starts going through. Change, frustration, anger, this, right? Transformation is painful. It's painful. You don't know who you were. You're not who you were. You're not who you're going to be. You're unrec unrecognizable. But I used to crawl. I used to be manager. I used to be the boss. I used to, I used to, I used to, we used to be in Egypt. You used to be, you used, right? But right now, stay and finish your process. Because this process is what will unlock your greatness, your glory. And if you truncate it, if you abandon it, it's worse than where you're coming from. If you get too smart than God, you won't like where you end up. Follow God's process. It might not look pleasant. In fact, it looks messy. Messy, very messy. When a woman is giving birth, it's a messy business. But that process must complete. That process must complete. The baby must come out. That's why God said, will I bring to that edge? Will I bring you to this place and not finish what I started? Will I make you smell the new beginning and not make you eat of it? God said, no. But guess what? The children of Israelites... Just so we know that this is serious business, they decided not to fight for what was theirs. Did they eat it? No. They didn't. 
That's why the very last mile, <laughs> don't, don't, this is not the time to turn around. This is not the time to tell a story. This is not the time to abandon what God is doing in your life. Because that last mile, that last push, that last reveal of your new identity is very delicate. This is not the time to go back. This is not the time to give up. You have to press. You have to push. You have to believe. You have to cry. You have to ground. Whatever it takes, I'm coming out. Whatever I need to give this push, I'm coming out. Whatever needs to be destroyed and torn apart to reveal the new identity, I'm going to reveal. Because when the butterfly comes, until it gets bigger than the cocoon, it starts struggling. Right? It starts struggling. It's so tight. The space is tight. You can't move left, right. And God is saying things have to fall off you. The scaffolding that erected the building must come down to reveal the glory inside. Behaviors have to change. Thinking has to be renewed for God's glory to be revealed. Amen? Amen. I'll be wrapping up now. So number one, you're going to disrupt. Things would not feel familiar anymore. And we have the potter's will, Jeremiah 18, verse 5. Then this message from the Lord came to me. Family of Israel, Victory Chapel, you know that I can do the same thing with you. You are like the clay in the potter's hand, and I am the potter. This is the message of the Lord. So while you're, you know, figuring out your new identity, <laughs> what do people call you? You don't know, right? Yes, maybe you, you became a student again, right? And those who have been students, they know. That final exam is the most painful. Those who have been mothers know. That final push, in fact, you have to leave it to God. Because this betting, you will give it everything and then everyone takes over. Everyone won't take over until you have used up everything. You see, when a plane wants to take off, it will start out little by little. Little by little. It's crawling, right? Sit tight in your seatbelt. If you see the plane when it's still crawling, you'll be like, what is wrong? Can this thing take off? Will I bring to the edge of bed and not let you go to the next dimension? No, you will take off. But follow the process. Accelerate. Speed up. And the opposing force. See, when you are climbing up, not less force more force. The force that comes against the plane is what the plane uses to rise. The opposition, the Goliath crowned David. What you will fight and tear down will open the door. So ready yourself to fight. These, whatever is yours, you say this, it's time to collect. You know Elijah <laughs> in the desert? He said, no, this is time of rain. He felt it, right? But if he went home and sit down, will the rain come? <laughs> no. So he went to betting position. That's the caterpillar in the cocoon. And the struggle begins. Lord, manifest your glory. Manifest your power. Manifest what you showed me. God, I want to see it. I want to touch it. I want to experience it. I want to heed the good of the land. You say, if we are willing and obedient, we will heed the good of the land. Lord, I submit myself to your obedience. I am here. Okay, heaven, show up. And then heaven showed up with one hand. He said, mm, mm, <laughs> no. 
<laughs> ah, Lord, one hand there, not enough. I said abundance. <laughs> I hear an abundance of rain. <laughs> oh, abundance. Say abundance. Abundance of blessings. Until you see it, don't stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until you see it, don't stop. The enemy wants you, you know, the plane that is trying to go off, go up. He wants it not to go up because you are going against opposition. The wind gets tougher. It starts blowing against you. But guess what? That's when you accelerate. That's when you do more, not less. That's when you do more, not less. Contraption closes as you get closer to bed. The distance, oh, it's coming. No, oh, it's coming. But when it is coming, you are now tired. <laughs> You're tired. No, this is not the time to get tired. Better call if you need prayer, partner, prayer, whatever, friendly advisor. This is the time. Let people blow you wind. Because as the plane is going up, you need more energy, more force. When a rocket is going, you need more power, not less. Because the forces that wants to keep you down, <laughs> you have to be bigger than them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to get bigger. So there are some things, there are some battles God won't fight for you. Because if he fights this, he will fight that. Then you fight that. No, he will give you your weapon. Go and fight. And he will say, success is guaranteed. Success is guaranteed, but you will fight. Because guess what? There are more fights. If I fight this one for you, what of the next two? No, ready yourself. Strengthen yourself. This is the time to push. So you're going to need more knowledge, more capacity. You need to, you're going to need to gain clarity. You're going to need to ask questions of the right people. You're going to need to seek mentors as well. Because the closer you get to power, influence, guys, you need advice. Because the protocol of the butterfly is different than the protocol of the caterpillar. And as I'm rounding up, when you think about Vashti, you remember the queen? She was so close to the power, to the king, but somebody didn't teach her something. Somebody didn't teach her a protocol that if the king calls you, even to come and roll on the floor, you better show up. Because you keeping that position is dependent on you following protocol. So as God is promoting you to be manager, don't be talking to your superiors anyhow. Don't think, eh, now we are on the same title, or even your peers. Listen, it's only on the ground where there are no consequences for your words and action. When you go up, listen, I host world leaders. When you go there, you better gent, you have to follow protocol. You can't, oh, I'm this. Who are you? Everybody here is something. And don't let them use your power to finish you. Don't let them use their own access to close access to you. Because when you get close, and God is promoting you, elevating you, giving you more money. Now you are buying house. You are buying car. Now you have company. Some people will say, I have arrived. Be careful. Be very careful. That's it. Be very careful. Because the higher you go, listen, the plane on top versus the plane on the ground. Which one is at risk? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Vashti fell so bad. She felt so bad. Finished. One day queen, another day gone. But look at Esther. She had Mordecai. And she found favor with those who know protocol. And they were dipping her in incense. And she was following protocol. And they were dipping her. They were washing away, you know, the identity of a slave. Right? They were washing it away. They were washing it away. They were washing it away. And they were beautifying her for the king. May the Lord beautify you for new dimensions. Yeah. That these people in your, the CEO will be like, ah, ah, let us wash her. Let us wash him. 
Let us decorate him. Let us give him access. Let us promote him. Let us, that's favor. That's favor. You need more of it. May the people at the top favor you. Because when they favor you, they call you closer. Esther, come. The same thing that would have destroyed Vashti's Vashti's. access. Come. You look good. You follow protocol. You treat me well. You honor me. So no matter where you are going, remember there's always something, somebody at the top. (laughs) That always has more access than you. That may also have the hair of the same people you think you know. You don't want that. So, humility and understanding why God put you there. Why God gave you the house. Why God gave you the job. Why God gave you the access. Why God promoted you. Get it clear. Get it clear. Because he's putting you there to serve more. So don't get there and think, no more service. (laughs) Now let other people come and serve me. You got it wrong. The higher you go, the more God expects us to serve. Amen? And then you're going to need to sharpen your skills. Because God needs people who who can get things done. Right? On all levels. Promotion is not just so you can go and sit down and enjoy the pleasure of the access. So Mordecai said, Esther, mm-hmm. if you think this is a place you just hang out and you are shielded because you have your nice house, because you are in the palace, and you think you are the queen, and this thing will not hit you, check again. By adventure, God puts you here for a time like this. By adventure, we are here for a time like this. So we are going to pray. Take any position that you feel comfortable. God birthed in me a new identity. You know, the one that will look like how you want me to look. The one that you've assigned to me. Not the one the enemy has assigned. You know, the enemy also has an assignment to kill, to steal, and to destroy. To steal that same promise. God birthed in me a new identity. You know, sometimes God will encounter Jacob and he will call him a new name. I will say, Abraham, my promise is to make you a great nation, but you're not behaving like my promise. So let's change your name. Let's change your name. Maybe maybe you need to practice. So some of you need to practice. Okay? You need to practice so that you can embody what God wants to call out of you. So you say, ah, father of many generations. Father of many generations. <laughs> right? So start calling yourself. Call it forth. Call it forth. Whatever that is that God has showed you, speak it. Let everyone know that you know. Lord, but in us. A new identity. A new identity. Also pray. Lord, let the force of heaven launch me into that new identity. God, let let there be a push. An heavenly push. In case I'm still crawling. In case I'm still wasting time. In case they're still doubting. (laughs) By the mercy of God, kick us. (laughs) Push us. You know? These children of Israel, when Moses came and said this, they were like arguing with Moses. Who made you this over us? Who told you this? Ah, God is calling you out of Egypt and you are whining. But the hand of heaven shook. You know, even the force that did not want to let them go. Heaven moved all the gods, all the chains. Yeah, everyone broke it. So you're going to pray. Whatever force, whatever chain is keeping me in Egypt, God, let everyone break it. Let everyone contend completely. Let my release be assured. 
my release, certain, effective. Because when God gets involved and says, let my people go. When God says, let my own people, a people called unto me, that I want them to worship me. And you say, you know, let them go, I will deal with you. So Lord, deal with all forces that refuse to let us move. That refuse to release our sources, our income, our manifestation, our breakthrough, our children, our health, our wealth, today contend with such forces. Let them hear heaven. Let them hear, if they will not hear you, at least the name of Jesus they will hear. Right? Maybe you've been praying your own prayer. Oh, God, I know you. God, I know you. Help me. No. In the name of Jesus. The name above every name. Every name. At the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every force that refuses to bow today, you bow. In the name of Jesus, we cut you off. Ah, anything, I don't care what it is, that says I will not take flight, that says the identity will not break forth, you are done today. Today is the end of the hold, the start of a new identity. You know, Goliath was vibrating for 40 days. Taunting God's people, calling them names, mocking them, mocking the call of God upon their life. And a child came with a stone, with the word of God. And he said, today, you have to say today. Today, what confronts me, you are done. That Goliath, your head on the ground. So the tool that God has given you, your mouth, you will say, Goliath, today you are done. You say, you've been searching for the job. You've been applying. Your visa, they will not let it come out. Well, people are opposing you. And you say, you will not call Jesus' name. That they give you what belongs to you. No. Today is the end. Whether it's job, whether it's admission, whether it's business, whether it's health, Whatever it is you are believing God, say, God, today I want what is mine. <laughs> Let heaven give me what is mine. Let heaven give birth to a new identity. Because you need that thing to operate in that high level. You need it. You need your wealth. Financial power. Increase. Tied to the house. The car, you need the car to drive to your job, man. So whether it's a car, you are believing God. Say, God, today, give me my car. I don't want to be begging anymore. I don't want to say, come and pick me again, oh. You know, when caterpillar is crawling, begging, help, help. No, but when you are flying, when you have your own car, you will move. When you have your own house. You see that conversation you've been having with your landlady, you won't have it anymore. Ah, give me another time now. Come back again. You won't have those conversations anymore. When God shifts you, there are some conversations that are so unnecessary anymore. No more begging. Because now you have authority. Right? You have authority to call forth those things that are not as if they were. So start calling forth. Those things that are not, I see if they were. Those things that are not, I see if they were. Those things that are not, I see if they were. Start calling it. Call your name. Call your name. Call the title. Call the business. Call it forth. Call your house. Tell God where you want to live. Tell your school, the school you want to go to, the things you want. Call it forth. Say yes. 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 In the name of Jesus. Everyone says yes. He says he will back you. He said he will back you. God is always here to back you. You just need to stand and fight. You just need to stand and fight. I exalt.